Adventist Information Network Icon segment. This evening, we'll be interviewing Mrs. Miriam Caesar Moore. Mm -hmm. With me, I have Mr. East Lord, and of course, myself <laughs> will be with you. I am Natalia Nancis, will be with you for the evening. As you all know, Mrs. Moore is not only an Adventist icon, mm -hmm. but she is literally a Tobago icon. In the community. Exactly. You know, she has been a nurse. She has been a politician. She has served in the mission as well. She, she did everything, Natty. She did so much. So we are going to hear a little bit about her life today. And this will be just part one of a two-part interview that we would have with her. Of course, her. because she has so much to share, right? So much to share. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Adventist Information Network Icon segment. With us, we have today Mrs. Miriam Caesar Moore. Mm -hmm. she, is, she has been a politician, a nurse, a teacher. You name it. <laughs> <laughs> she was. <laughs> she is a mother. She's a grandmother. She's an aunt. A wife. You know, a wife, <laughs> right? She has served and is serving in many capacities, right? Mm -hmm. And we are here to just ask her a few questions. So, the conversation, well, we had a conversation with her before, but we would like you to know a little bit about her, That's right. right? So, we have a few questions for her so that you'll know about her. Um, nothing too hard, Mrs. Moore, right? So, <laughs> we'll get straight into <laughs> it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my first question to you, how would you describe your childhood growing up? My childhood was... Uh, very, very stress, stress, stressful in a sense mm. because we were poor. Okay. okay. And uh, when you came up during the era in the 1950s, 60s, there were very few rich black people. Mm -hmm. So it was something that you, you were used to. Because you were not rich and your neighbors were not rich. Mm -hmm. So everybody kind of uh, had a similar background. Experience, right. And let me take out the word stressful. It wasn't really stressful, but it was different to what you have now. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, remember, no in indoor toilet, no indoor water, kitchen outside. Kitchen outside, outside yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, leaking roof. Mm -hmm. But one thing we had were parents who were loving. Mm -hmm. So in spite of all that, you grew up in a loving atmosphere. Mm -hmm. right. and, and that made up for the fact that you didn't have much. much yes. okay. okay, okay. So you were a teacher at Harmon. Then you became a nurse and then um, a politician. Do you think that your childhood would have impacted your career in any way? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Because my family, my mother became an Adventist uh, when I was about 10 or 11, mm -hmm. 11, mm -hmm. 12. So we didn't have that Adventist background. Okay. So when you, ha when you got into the Adventist culture, mm -hmm. there was something different. Mainly, there are things that there were rules, things that you, sh you couldn't do and mm -hmm. shouldn't do. So that my interest in health stemmed from that. Just mm -hmm. reading in those days with the, the book called Life and Health, mm -hmm. the magazine, like mm -hmm. how you bought and give, give uh, like priorities. priorities. Right. So we, the churches used to have a life and health, and not many people had it. Mm -hmm. I had a friend. Uh, I had a, a pen pal in those days that was working yeah, in, you know, in, the, have a pen pal, <laughs> in the in Southern Caribbean, um, in South Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so he would get, when he got those little magazines called Life and Health, he would send them to me. So that, that piqued my interest. Right. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. When I heard it, uh, an apple a day keep the doctor away. Mm -hmm. And they would have the apple and, and the picture. Yes, so it's that, very enticing. You didn't even know about apples, okay? Oh. <laughs> you never saw apples. You never right. saw apple. So that, kind, that was very, the, the whole health behind it, that mm -hmm. keeping the doctor away, that piqued my interest. Right. So from that, as a child growing up, I always wanted to do something that would make make health be a part of my life. Right. right. So <laughs> imagine going to areas like, okay, we didn't have, the, the ground was as hard as it, but I'm trying to plan something. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to put something because I know 
you, you need to put something down to get because we didn't know about we didn't know about carrots and mm -hmm. cabbage and we didn't know about those things. All meal on a daily basis would be things like corn, cuckoo, dumpling, um, potato, right. dashin. So they were, and when, the, well, when fruits came in, you had abundance. You had fruits, right, right, right. But you didn't have any fancy gourmet kind of mm -hmm. food that you people have now. Mm -hmm. So that, that piqued my interest to really get involved in, to, to love health. Right. And to love being healthy. Right. Okay. So that is what piqued your interest. Mm. What I want to hear from you now is what motivated you to continue onto the career path of being a nurse? Okay, so when I finished... As, as you noticed, I went to both Bishops and, and um, Harmon. Mm -hmm. So when I came from Harmon, I was given a job to teach. Okay, at Harmon. When I finished at Harmon. Right. And I got, um, I was teaching health science. Mm. I, did, I didn't know that I was so involved in the health. I was teaching health science mm -hmm. there, Bible and English. And um, so I taught to raise money to go and become a dietitian. Oh, okay. That was really my first choice right, to be right. a dietitian. That was your plan A. Yes, that oh. was my plan A all the time. From that little apple a day kid, the doctor mm -hmm. away. I just wanted to be, a, I just wanted to be in food yes. so I could help people I could to live better and right. eat better. Mm -hmm. So it took me four years to raise the funds. <laughs> Wow. That's fine. No, it's not how you start. Yeah, <laughs> it's how you finish. You know, exactly. How much you got a month in Harmon? Two hundred and fifty dollars. I was a month. close. I was about to say like a one eighty oh, or I something. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty dollars wow. yeah. a month. My first, my first check was like, ooh. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty dollars. And that was so much. Yeah. Yeah. Because from that, I was able to buy a new couch set. Buy a double decker bed with two fifty. No, with with saving up for oh, Christmas. Okay, right, so because right. I started teaching at September, right. So when I save up all that, come December it was like Christmas, wow. Christmas like that. I was able to buy a double decker bed, mm -hmm. buy a little a little sitting chair, and it was such fun for the family. Mm -hmm. Right, because the first time they would have someone. I, I was the first to go to high school, the first to to finish high school. Mm -hmm. And, but I was the second in the, in, in the family. Oh, okay. I was so to I was the one that launched out. Mm -hmm. So that, um, that, imagine Christmas and everybody now is so happy. So just think about that, mm -hmm. that the little that you have was able to make so many people, people happy. People happy, right. yeah. And that was important. Mm -hmm. So I, um, it took me four years mm -hmm. to, to <laughs> and let me give you a little joke. I must give you this little joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So here, here I am in Harmon High School, planning to go away and getting all excited. Went down to the embassy, my first try, and they said I needed more money. Mm -hmm. Wow. So here, the, the wow is, they had already given me a send-off party with oh, a gift. Oh my goodness. <laughs> with a gift. So I have to come back from Trinidad oh all goodness. humiliated. Yes. I oh tried gosh. everything. To get a job in that not to come. <laughs> <laughs> I fully understand. <laughs> but but I had to eventually, you know, you had to come back yes, and teach yes, one yes, another yes, year. Yes, yes, yes. So I did and raised the fund my, to my father, mm -hmm. and there's where parental investment come in. Mm. My father, we had one cow, and people who, who heard the story and they hear it again, they would understand. My father had one milking cow mm -hmm. and gave us milk in the morning for tea. My brother, my baby brother, depended on that milk mm. because it's the only thing. We couldn't go and buy milk as, as, as they would now. It's either breastfeed or, or oh. what the cow or cow goat. Or goat yeah. mm -hmm. And he had to sell that milking cow to give me the money. To oh pay my passage mm -hmm. and my and part of my first down payment in in school, so when parents nowadays don't take the opportunity to invest in their children mm -hmm. in education, as I told you all earlier, if black people don't have an education, they are doomed. Mm. And when I say education, be it in whatever sphere, even in agriculture, masonry, mm -hmm. carpentry, whatever, it's education. Yeah. And they don't have it, we are, we are doomed. Mm -hmm. And just for the, 
the, the, the family structure. The children must be educated in things, doing something, mm -hmm. so that that legacy, not Continue. only of your family, but of the black, the, the black diaspora, the, or black people, mm -hmm. can shine out. And whether you are living in Africa, or in the Caribbean, or wherever you are, whether you're in America, mm -hmm. black people must, must gravitate to education. Yeah. It's our ticket, it's our passport to uh, a life here on earth. Mm -hmm. We know that we have the heavenly kingdom that we are working Looking towards. Forward to one, but, yeah. it, but having an education is important to us as black people. Yeah. So your motivation wasn't only an apple a day keeps the doctor away, mm -hmm. but it was also being an educated young black woman. Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was foremost because when I look, there are 14 of us in my family. Wow. I'm the second. Mm -hmm. My first sister didn't go to high school. And when I look and see this and so, uh, they had to be a breakout. Mm -hmm. They had to be a breakout. A change in cycle. And I took yeah. that, and my parents were very helpful. Mm -hmm. I told you about him selling the cow. Yeah. But I didn't want to go back. How parents need to encourage the children. When I went to bishops in those days, if you fail one, if you fail English or math, you didn't get a certificate. Mm -hmm. I failed English. So I had to go and repeat in Hammond because I didn't have in those, the people in that time, when I feel and a lot of us who failed in my in my area, when that happened, my father decided that he's going to send me to Hammond. Mm -hmm. You know what the men in the village tell him? You sending her there to bring bring belly? Oh um, okay. You sending her to school you pay that before bishops are free, okay? Mm -hmm. so yeah, but how much how much you had to pay. Yeah. And they see it as investing that money, you go in, my father was a coconut tree climber, you go in that to, for her to bring belly. The, wow. So he but he defied them. He kept on uh, his, his job, his focus was to make sure that I go to high school mm -hmm. and he did. So he did not give up on me mm -hmm. when I failed in, in, in bishops. Mm -hmm. he, he kept on by. I know of a girl who had failed. She was the best in science and math. Mm -hmm. Top in science and math, become, but because she failed English, her life was doomed. Mm. Because she didn't have the people to push her. Support, and yeah, 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 yeah. OK, OK. So as you reflect on your transition to America, right, becoming mm -hmm. a nurse, well, First of all, going to nursing school abroad and just the experience of beginning the career in nursing, how would you say that went for you? Was it challenging at um, any point adjusting to the American culture, going to school? How was that experience? Well, let's start first with the culture. And let's mm -hmm. start first as far. I wanted to go to do, remember, to, to do uh, dietitian, Di yes. yeah, to be a dietitian. Yeah. So I left here with that purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it was a, bit, a rude awakening, mm -hmm. rude awakening to go to America. The first in the in the in the village mm -hmm. of Bethel, probably the first, maybe one and two others. But I think I was one of the first uh, uh, students mm -hmm. to actually go out. to go to study to yeah. study, right? So um, rude awakening because now you have TV and all these that tell you about America. So even though you didn't go there personally. You know about you have it, the experience mm -hmm. and people would just yeah. yeah. But here you are in a place. My first um, uh, awakening was getting into New York. Mm -hmm. I have a half sister that was waiting there for me, and the people and the buildings, everything so new, so many people, mm -hmm. so many buildings, high buildings, and and it it, it was a real really. Uh, what should I say? Like a, a culture shock. Difficult. Mm -hmm. A difficulty for me. Yeah. Interesting. So here I am. I got through that. My sister was able to help me through that. Mm. And then I ended up in Maryland mm -hmm. because I had to go to the Adventist. Uh, there's where they accepted me in CUC. It was called Columbia Union College. Now it's called Washington, Washington um, University. Mm -hmm. And... Here I am, I'm 23 years old, and I'm going on campus to live. And I'm a freshman. Mm -hmm. Freshmen in America are 18 and 19 years old. 
when you go there as a 23 year old as a freshman you you are out of the league mm -hmm. the, the league of the 17 and 18 mm -hmm. year old so you get on campus and you have to live on campus which you 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 never did in your life you didn't know about mm -hmm. but i i fared well in that i went during the summertime so i got acclimatized mm -hmm. to the area oh the really people, that was good and there were people there who helped so they gave me a job first job was to clean clean the, the clean the, the dorms the dorms mm -hmm. okay so I you end up cleaning to the toilets. toilets and stuff yes you clean the dorms so you have to clean toilets and do those things and your pay was a dollar fifty an hour oh okay a dollar fifty but an hour that yeah mm, interesting okay interesting right? i thought that was the fun it was like a dollar <laughs> yes. yes. dollar fifty hours. and how many hours roughly you get about three hours for what because you, don't, you can't do full time. Yes, because okay. you're in school. Right. So at I'm first, still a bit yeah, yeah. So when I went there just with the first term pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to get through with the other terms? Prayer. Mm -hmm. And you tell yourself you have to succeed. I can't go home. Yeah. Because so that work and study, work and study. So I was able to do that on campus for the first semester. Mm -hmm. But after that, I had to get out of campus and find work otherwise, which I did with some doctors cleaning the homes and stuff like that. And then, um, so, it, 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 very hard. Yeah, okay. it's difficult. You have to pay your school fee, you have to eat, your dorm fee. You have but to study on top of all and of that. Then yeah. you have to send home a little bit. Mm. I can remember my parents, when they received that little letter, at the post office, they know a little twenty dollars is in it, mm -hmm. and in those days, <laughs> twenty dollars yeah, was plenty money. Yeah. So I'm just saying, how children now have it so, so Easy. good, mm -hmm. and, and and you need to recognize those that that helped you. Don't ever forget those that helped you. So I never forgot my parents. Always send a little thing, squeeze and send. Mm -hmm. So I went. So how did I get into nursing from that? From that, yes, good question. <laughs> I, um, on the campus, the majority of of of, of um, students mm -hmm. were nursing. That was nursing was a big thing then. Right. And see them in their caps and the mm -hmm. white and this and the, you know stockings and everything. Yeah. yeah. And yes, looking real, real sharp. Mm -hmm. And most of them um, and, and you see them going going in their nursing uniform. And I sat one day, because I started dietetics, I did food and nutrition, mm -hmm. I did all that. But then I, I a, a mindset just came. They, you only need one dietitian or two in a hospital. Yeah. But you need lots nurses, of nurses. Facts, mm -hmm. all the time. And at that time, they were making money. Mm -hmm. And the flexibility in that I, I now started to get into being a nurse tech, a nurse assistant. Mm -hmm. So as a nurse assistant, I'm seeing the flexibility. I could work nights. And have the day, the yes. Day. Yeah. So that's what called me to change. First, the flexibility. Second, second, first, the, the aura, the aura of the nurses, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? <laughs> then, that aura then, is still there, my <laughs> Then the flexibility. Why well, close brown shoes? Then, 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 then all that. So I, I put it together and decide nursing is it. Right. So I, I that's how I got into nursing. Okay, okay. okay. All right. So <clears throat> you you spoke about challenges as a student, right? But any challenges as a nurse that you would have faced after mm -hmm. getting into nursing itself? Yes, challenges because uh, the science, you had to do a lot of science. Mm -hmm. I, I was not very strong in science. Right. right. But I, I, I was able to, to scrape out like a C and <laughs> stuff. And, it was, and got, and, but when I got into my study of nursing, I was doing like, I was getting like um, distinction mm. and I was able to get a scholarship. Mm. Oh, okay. Got a scholarship good. to finish up my, my senior year. Mm -hmm. That's good. And that was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and during my senior year now, getting ready to, to, to finish it up, Got married. Wow. Okay. Got married. So imagine. Got married. Mm -hmm. Not finished school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Working. Right. Working. And got pregnant. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> Plot 
twist. <laughs> wow. Plot twist. <laughs> what, 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 and got pregnant. That was a lot there. Yeah. All in the space of how many years? Four years. Four, five wow. years. Wow. Four, five years. Okay. So by the time I was 23 or 27, and met this handsome young man mm. who, knew, who knew me from Tobago. Right. But he went up and I, I, we were not close here. Mm -hmm. he, he, um, he was teaching at Harmon too. Mm -hmm. But in those days, the younger chicks were the ones. <laughs> That's what draw the attention, yes, 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 yes. So he didn't, didn't see me, mm -hmm. you know, but went to America and there where things start, thing happened. Right. right. So he called me, got into, to introduce his family just for, for I think it was a Christmas. Mm -hmm. And from that, you know, we, we kind of hit it all. Okay. So that is, that, that's the secret there. <laughs> We, we had a head off. Yeah. <laughs> and link up yeah, with some Tobago yeah. yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bunch yeah, but, together. But one of the things I, I would say, make your links here first. Eh? Right. So make and renting. I say, make your links here and right. try to hold it. Hold it. Mm -hmm. Yes, because nowadays it's more challenging. It yes. is. So you make it your is. link here and you hold it here. But when you go, it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, all have of choice, this... you have choices. Facts. Right. So all of this happened while you were away? Yes. How many yes. years you spent away doing nursing? Okay, so, so I went in 19... Okay, so I went in 1969. Um, mm -hmm. I went. Then I got married in 1972. Okay. okay. So that's like three, three years. years. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Then I graduated in 1974 mm -hmm. and got a baby at that time. Mm. And during that time, I was um, making babies like a factory. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I produced, I produced three boys. She produced. I go to she, no, go she to, said factory. That's how she said she right to them. So in, the, in, in the nursing, that time, that's why night, working nights, mm -hmm. and Addison, with my husband, would come and take care of them during the day. The day, day right. I mean, I, it was hard. That is yeah, yeah. It was hard. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Little it was mm -hmm. it was hard, okay, mm -hmm. because he was in dental school. Too. Yeah, wow. it was very okay. hard, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that you now it's a little different because people, everybody has somebody away yeah. that can help and to show you to you do. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So you went from nursing school, mm -hmm. then you graduated and became a nurse, mm -hmm. all while getting married, then getting, getting pregnant. pregnant. Babies, yeah. Had your factory, <laughs> right? And then you eventually came back home, yeah. right? So I want you to tell the audience what influenced you in um, going into politics, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. What was what was the influence to your transition? Well, be, being a nurse, and mm -hmm. I must say that I also taught nursing at Howard University. Oh wow! And that is very important because people think, okay, especially as a woman, a yes, black woman and too, that, and, yeah. And, and doing that, taught at Howard University then. My husband came down because he, he was bent on coming back to Tobago to serve. Mm -hmm. So when he came down, I was bent on by staying in America because mm -hmm. now I started now I started gain a little prominence. Yes, yes. Working at Howard and getting some money and now mm -hmm. no, I'm no longer I'm, I have to do the night shift and I'm there and I want to stay there because now a little money coming in. Yes, yes, yes. But he said let me tell you, he he told me and this is very important, he said, Miriam um, we are getting married, but I want you to know that I am returning to Tobago. Mm -hmm. So you say you you decide how you how how you're going to marry me. If you're going to marry me, I want to return to Tobago, and you must know that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I knew that getting into into the marriage. So when he left in in, in seventy seven or seventy eight to come home, I had to follow soon thereafter. Mm -hmm. so I think he came home about the March April. And I, by 78, by 78, um, uh, December, mm -hmm. I was home. So coming home now, and this is very important. Here it is that we, I know he's giving time. <laughs> Here it is that, <laughs> that, um, we, we, we get to the point now where I got into politics. So coming home, and one day I was calling my daughter, say, we were mm -hmm. living up the fort in one of the quarters there, coming up the fort, and there was a fire in the Ooh. hospital. Oh my goodness. There was a fire in the old people's section. They mm -hmm. call it the, 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 the I know the, the, the geriatric care. Yeah, geriatric. The, the, <laughs> geriatric. Old people's section. Yeah. <laughs> and because where, where we live, you could see the, 
You could see the hospital from there because we were living right in that building with the big mango tree. Mm -hmm. You all may not know about it because it broke down that building since then. But my daughter, I was smelling smoke. Mm -hmm. I, about five o'clock in the evening, six o'clock in the evening, and I'm smelling smoke. When I look up, a big blaze. So my husband and I, we ran out and were able to save some of the people there and, and, and bring them out and, and so on. Wow. And people come. And from that, the, because of that, and I, it became a, a Tobago thing that the, the hospital was on fire, the U.S. security was on fire. And there I was in the news mm. talking about that with a and Robinson. Ah. Okay. So from that... <laughs> <laughs> I know you have so much to tell us, but we need to take a small break. So we'll be taking a small break and we'll hear more from Mrs. Moore. Come and be a part of our family. Join us every Friday at 6.30 p.m. for Family Worship. Let us welcome in the Sabbath together as one. Each week we feature a new family. You don't want to miss it. So join us at 6.30 p.m. every Friday on Airside Media Tobago on YouTube or Facebook. See you there. to our icon segment and we are here with mrs miriam caesar moore and we stopped at a cliffhanger yeah she had us hanging there yes yes right? yes how she got into politics mm -hmm. so coincidentally that she had to do a media briefing with Ian Right, right. <laughs> about a fire as such a big accident in exactly. the geriatric unit. Exactly. You know, so Mrs. Moore, you can continue. Tell us what happened when you and your husband had to save so many geriatric but, but patients. As you know, it, it was, was very traumatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, um, but I, know, I think one or two people died. Oh. But um, from that, people were coming to me because they see us, you know, talking about As a need, need and, as and, as right, a need right, and right, right, right. That uh, this thing happened because the first time mm -hmm. something like that was happening mm -hmm. in Tobago. So because of that going out there, I was approached well, by a and R to, on the, to do a, 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 an interview mm -hmm. about that. And then from that, he, I guess, um, they saw where my interest was in health right. and, and to um, really help the people of Tobago. And he just came one evening and he said, are you, are you interested in going up for better patients in the mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. So they, they, they think, everybody thinks that you can, can pull it Be out. a good representative, yeah. And, uh, but obviously, that was far <laughs> from my mind. Politics was far from my mind. Mm -hmm. It's something I had to discuss. I said, but tell him I think about it. Mm -hmm. So I came home discuss it with my husband, with my family. 
At that time, my father was alive, and he's, he's an APT James man. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yes, and so he, he encouraged, mm -hmm. and, and I decided to take it up. And I, I won. The first time I, I went, I won, and with a vast majority, mm -hmm. because I think um, people saw too. Yeah. And, if, and the fact that, you know, I was kind of down to earth. I'm a yes. person like that. I was, I was about to say <laughs> that, um, especially from the last, I shouldn't say it's but the last um, um, elections that we had, mm. I know that persons yearned for a politician that they could relate right, to. And right. I could definitely tell yeah. how, you know, relatable and, and you are. And when you come, especially the Seventh-day Adventist, yeah. you have all this, this um, doctrine, your mm -hmm. doctrine teaches you to be kind to people, yes. not to be high to tight, yes. mm -hmm. and to be honest, mm -hmm. and, 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 and so on, so and not to not to malinga people, mm -hmm. not to malign people. Mm -hmm. So people think politics where you go and curse and you swear and you t talk bad about people and evil. You don't have to do that. Right. So I run all my campaign very honestly. Right. And so I am. Um, so I won. Mm -hmm. It was very. We were victorious. Eleven mm -hmm. seats won. We won eleven seats at the time, and, and Mr. Mackenzie, mm -hmm. former uh, Assemblyman Mackenzie, he's deceased now. He was the only PNMC. Mm -hmm. During that time, so because of my interest in health, I was given the job as secretary for health. Right. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you, I think you're going to ask, like, oh, you, you need to know what did I do, what mm -hmm. I accomplished during that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You can share. The site of the hospital. Mm -hmm. The site of the hospital. I was instrumental mm -hmm. in choosing the site of the hospital. Oh. Okay. This That's is the, the one at the history. Fort. Yes. No, no, no. No, the, the one current one. At, at Signal Hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Current one. <laughs> yes, it went way back in 1980. 1980 right. No, but you could so you know how long. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. And look at where. Yeah. Look at when that hospital was built. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you but know. But, it was, so it's, but it's I wasn't involved in the building and the design. I know, but in terms of the but site, it's land. The site. It's, a, it's a long and time coming. The reason coming. being that um, the, we had a, we had a, a choice between Bacolet. Mm -hmm. And, and, and there, mm -hmm. and we showed there because Bacolet was in that time very swampy and stuff like right. that. And there you can get the view, the breeze and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I, I may differ with the design, we, it wasn't done during my time, mm -hmm. so I have nothing to do with the design. If mm -hmm. you find it, um, some people may not find it very user-friendly as we mm -hmm. use the term, but I, it depends. But yeah. I, I go there and I feel very it's very breezy, very nice, yeah, very yeah. healthy. Especially, Especially the walk we're the chapel, going, going yeah. up to the chapel, so I love I, that. I really love, I, I, mm -hmm. I enjoy the air, I think it, it's well kept and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's how, I got, that's how I got into health, and the time was also housing. Right. Health and housing, mm -hmm. so I was able to do plots, get plots down in, in Boku. Mm -hmm. at, uh, they call that place, I think, what they call it, Boku Development. I was able to give plots out there to people who were in need. Even today, this lady, she, she always meets me and she said, Mrs. Moore, you don't remember mm. how, how you gave me that plot? She had, no, she had no money, she had very little, and she had her children, yeah. and I didn't remember. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are the things you see, and let me tie in now with Susulan. Mm -hmm. That whole Susulan development, mm -hmm. I was involved in that from day one. Mm -hmm. Sister Pam, Pamela Nicholson, mm -hmm. and John Humphrey, they took it to Parliament. But I could tell you, I walk every home in Bethel, mm -hmm. every home with my hat and, and my shades, mm -hmm. begging people to buy that land for 7,000. Mm -hmm. Begging 7, people for 7,000. 7, at the time, for land for 7, at the time, they, they didn't want to buy it because they said they wouldn't get lights and they wouldn't get water. And most of the PNM people, they got into it and bought it. Mm -hmm. A lot of PNM people bought it. And all people from Bethel did not buy it. I had a cousin that bought two plots. Mm -hmm. And then after, she gave it up because she said, you know, she, she didn't think we could. And yeah. gave up those two plots. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I say that to say... People think, you know, when people think that your representative, sometimes your representative comes with something that you know that's going to help you. But because of politics, you, you, you get a negative view of mm -hmm. it, and that should not be. Mm -hmm. Listen to what your representatives are saying, 
They they they, they work hard. Mm -hmm. They want to keep their they want to keep their representation. So you need to listen to them. They yeah. not be all perfect, and I'm telling you, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. it, they're not perfect, but they 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 want to do good for the country. Yes, 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 yes. So you mentioned that. Um, be your Seventh Day Adventist traits in terms of being kind, being honest, being humble, mm -hmm. it played into your your personality as a yeah. politician. Yes. What advice would you give to another Seventh Day Adventist youth or any individual that would like to become a politician or is interested mm -hmm. in the field? First, you go in, and your main aim is mm -hmm. I am a Seventh Day Adventist Christian, yes, okay. and I'm going to remain that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So when it comes to the big concern about Sabbath mm -hmm. and drinking and, and all the partying and stuff, you don't have to. I spent three terms in the assembly and never Bye. won the, terms. yes. The, if you notice my bio, I, I, when I, um, so after 84 to 88, I went, I went away because I had to, my children at that time needed to be educated, so I went away. Mm. But they called me back. Mm -hmm in 1997 to serve as a counselor. Mm -hmm. So I served as a counselor then from 1997 to, 2000 and, to 2001. And then I won my seat. The only four of us who won our seats, in that time that was when PNM came and, and really- Sweep, uh, sweep. <laughs> clean yeah, sweep. <laughs> and I won my seat mm -hmm. because of my affiliation with the people, right. staying close to the people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, But let us go now, that question about Sabbath keeping youth, mm -hmm. let them know you are a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to attend any any function on a Friday night and mm -hmm. Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Right. And they always know that Mrs. Moore wouldn't come. Yeah. She, like, after <laughs> Sabbath, after 6 o'clock, I said, no, after the sun goes down. <laughs> Correct. Then the next thing, too, I'll give you one example. When the Queen first came to Tobago, mm -hmm. and this is so important, mm -hmm. the Queen first visited Tobago came to the assembly and we were supposed to entertain her as, a, as assembly people mm -hmm. in, in government house. I was given the assembly, all assemblymen were invited. I declined because it was on a Saturday. Mm. I declined to go and shake the queen's hand because it was my Sabbath and I said, queen or no queen, mm -hmm. I honor God yes. first. first. Mm -hmm. So any po assembly Adventist politician would think that they can go and, and, and go in public, be a Seventh day Adventist, and still desecrate God's Sabbath Friday evening from sunset to sunset and think that God is honored. No. Mm -hmm. And you can stand up for principle when mm -hmm. you do that, they know. Mm -hmm. You think I didn't want to go and meet the Queen and shake her hand? Yes, I wanted to. That's the principle. The principle? Mm -hmm. yes. So with anything on Sabbath Friday night, they know when it's, when it's time for. When it's, 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 what do you call it, political, political time, you don't get me on a Friday evening, you don't get me on Sabbath. Sabbath after sundown, Sabbath. And the principle of being honest, you know when you come to me, I deal with everyone at the same level. Mm -hmm. When politics is over, it's over. When it's time to serve the people, I serve the people. Yeah. I don't look at whether you are PNM or or or, or, or no, so. whatever. You are, you are to be going. Yes. Yes? Right, 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 right. Yeah. So we have come to the end of our interview. I'd like to thank you so much for listening. Well, thank you all for <laughs> listening. And thank you for taking the time out of your evening to chat with us. Yes. Um, you have lived a very fulfilled life. Yes. And you know, that's, that's very applaudable. Mm -hmm. That is very applaudable. You know, while listening to you, you're a very all-round person. You, you know, business, health, mm -hmm. teaching, that, that, that is just truly amazing. Very much so. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot to learn from Mrs. Moore as well. We can Thank enjoy you. life, oh, you know, yes. even while pursuing so many big things. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. she was able to get married, <laughs> you know, and produce children, yes, according yes, to yes, her, yes, yes. right? All while being a nurse, being mm -hmm. a teacher, being a politician, mm -hmm. and all now you're still enjoying life because your senior grandchildren That's grow it. up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you made the legacy as a black woman that you wanted yeah. to make, yeah. right? So that's very applaudable, as Tai said. I am encouraged as mm -hmm. a black young mm -hmm. woman. And I want to leave a last word. Don't give up on God. Yes. Being a Seventh-day Adventist, you have rich, you are rich mm -hmm. in talent. No matter where in the world you go, people would respect you because 
you can stand up and speak, you can, can command your, 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 your words because of the Seventh-day Adventist Church from childhood that brought you up. So I want you all never give up mm -hmm. on the church. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Yeah. Moore. Adventist Information Network Icon Segment.